Lesson 3.6, we're going to choose a multiplication method for two-digit factors. We can solve and record the product of two-digit factors by using either partial products, which we learned in video 3.4, or regrouping, which we learned in video 3.5. And they're both linked in the description, so it's very important, if you haven't seen them, to please watch them so you don't become lost or confused. We will review them quickly in this video, but hopefully you have seen them already. So let's do a real quick partial products review from video 3.4. We need to multiply 54 times 28. So the first thing we do is estimate. So our estimate is 1,500. We have the basic facts of 5 times 3, which is 15, and we have two zeros in the factor, so we have two zeros in the product. We have 1,500. So remember, when we're multiplying partial products, we think of that W. We're going to start with the tens place right here and do 20 times 50, which is 1,000. Then we're going to slant off to the right here, aren't we? We're going to do two tens times 4, which is 80. That's 20 times 4. Then we're going to do the third step going slanted to the left, and we're going to do 8 times 5 tens, which is 8 times 50. That's 400. Then we're going to do the last step, the ones, 8 times 4, which is 32. We add our partial products, and we're going to get 1,512. And our estimate was 1,500, so that's a very reasonable answer. And we can make sure we did it correctly. We can check our work by drawing a model. We break the 54 into a 50 plus 4. We break the 28 into a 20 plus 8. So we know we needed to multiply 20 times 50 and 20 times 4 and 8 times 50, and 8 times 4. And we did, so we know we did it correctly. For a quick review of regrouping, which we learned in video 3.5, again, we're going to have our estimate of 50 times 30, which is 1,500. And we're going to start in the ones place this time. When we were doing partial products, we started in the tens place. Now we're going to start in the ones place. And we're going to do 8 times 4, which is 32. And we regroup the 3 for the 3 tens, and we put the 2 down into the ones place. Now we're going to do 8 times 5 tens, which is 40 tens, plus 3 more tens is 43 tens, and we write it here. And now that we're finished using that regrouped 3, we're going to cross it out so we don't get confused in the future. Now we're going to multiply the tens place. And because we're multiplying the tens place, our answer is going to be here and here. But we know that's always a 0. So we can look at this as a 2 times 4, which is an 8, and write the 8 here. But it's really a 2 tens times 4, which is 80. So that's why we have the 0. We have an 80 here. We had room to write 80, so we did. Now we're going to do 2 tens times 5 tens, which is 10 tens, which is 1,000. And we write the 10 tens here, and we have 1,512, which is a reasonable answer compared to our estimate. So when we're doing regrouping, the order we multiply is the 1s, and we got 32. Then we did 8 times 50. Then we did 20 times 4. Then we did 20 times 50. When we were doing partial products, we started with the 20 times 50, and we ended with the 8 times 4. So do you see the order? This has got 8 times 4 first. That was the last step for partial products. The second step here was 8 times 50. That was the third step. So it's completely opposite. This one starting with the 1s and ending with the 10s. This one started with the 10s and ending, ended with the 1s. SPF, or Sun Protection Factor, numbers start at 2 and go up to 70. And to figure how long we can stay in the sun with a given SPF, we multiply the number of minutes it takes us to get a sunburn by the SPF. Now, everyone has different types of skin, so someone may get a sunburn in 12 minutes, or another person might not get a sunburn for 30 minutes, or maybe they won't get a sunburn at all. But Bob says he gets a sunburn in 12 minutes. If he's going to use this sun lotion with an SPF of 15, we 
multiply the SPF times the minutes it takes him to get a sunburn, and that'll tell us how safe he is to stay in the sun without burning for how long, how many minutes he can stay in the sun. Now, solving this problem with partial products, we're going to do 15 for the SPF times 12, the amount of minutes it takes for Bob to get a sunburn. So we estimate first, the 15 is going to round to 20, the 12 is going to round to 10, and we have a 2 times 1, which is 2. We have two zeros in the factor, so we have two zeros in the product. Our estimate is 200. Because we're using partial products, we're going to think of our W and start with the tens place. And we're going to do 10 times 10, which is 100. Then we're going to do 10 times 5, which is 50. And we write our partial products in their correct place value beneath each other. Now we're going to do 2 times 10, which is 20, and 2 times 5, which is 10. We add up our partial products, and we get 180 minutes. And this is a reasonable answer because our estimate was 200. And it's easier to use partial products for some people because it's easier to do mental math. And we can check our work with a model. We break the 15 into a 10 plus 5. We break the 12 into a 10 plus 2. We draw our lines in our rectangle. And we see we need to multiply 10 times 10, which we did, and 10 times 5, which we did, and 2 times 10, which we did, and 2 times 5, which we did. When we add 100 plus 50, we get 150. When we add 20 plus 10, we get 30. We get 180. So we know Bob will be protected for 180 minutes from getting a sunburn. Thinking deeper about this problem, if Bob is protected from the sun for 180 minutes, how many hours is he protected? So we think, well, there's 60 minutes in each hour so 60 times some number is going to equal the 180 minutes. We think of the basic fact that 6 times 3 is equal to 18. We have a 6, we have our 18, we have a 0 in the factor, so we have the 0 in the product. The only thing missing is that factor. It must be a 3. That would give us the basic fact of 6 times 3, which is 18, and we have that 0 in the factor, so we have the 0 in the product. Now, we can also use repeated subtraction. We had 180 minutes. We know there's 60 minutes in each hour, so we subtract 60 minutes for one hour, and we're left with 120 minutes. We take another, away another 60 minutes, which is another hour, and we're left with 60 minutes. We take away one more 60 minutes for an hour, and we're at zero. We know when we get to zero, we finish with our repeated subtraction. We have one, two, three hours. 180 minutes is three hours. We're going to learn more about repeated subtraction in video 4.7 in our next chapter. And we can solve Bob's problem and find 15 times 12 with regrouping. We have our estimate, 15 rounds to 20, 12 rounds to 10. We have 20 times 10, which is 200, so our answer should be around 200. That we, so we'll know it's reasonable. To solve with regrouping, we start with the ones place and do 2 times 5, which is 10. We regroup that 10 up here and write the 0 in the ones place. Now we're going to do 2 times 1 10, which is 2 tens, plus 1 more 10 is 3 tens. So we have a 3 in the tens place. We have 30. Now we're going to write our answers in this row underneath the 30. And we're going to do the tens. We're going to do 110 times 5, which is 50. And remember, that's always a 0. That spot is always a 0. So we're doing 10 times 5, which is 50. We write it here. And the last step is we're going to multiply the tens. We're going to do 110 times 110, which is 100. We write that 100 in the hundreds place. We add our partial products. We get 180. There's 180 minutes, and it's a reasonable answer. And remember, we can use grid paper to keep our place values straight. We can also turn our lined paper sideways, and we can use the lines to keep our place values straight. And also remember, we need to cross out or erase old regroupings so we don't accidentally use them twice. We have 2 times 5 is 10. 
we regroup the 1 and put the 0 down, we do 2 times the 110 is 20, plus the one more 10 is 3 tens. And now that we know it's 3 tens, we cross this out so we don't use it again and get confused when we go to multiply the tens place. So we can use either method. We could use partial products or we could use regrouping to find the product of two digit factors. And the cat says, I prefer to use partial products because I can see all the steps. And the dog says, I prefer to use regrouping because I think it's faster. But the goat says, both methods will have the same final product, but we should know how to use both methods. We begin with the ones place when using regrouping because we might have a regrouped number that will need to be added to the tens place. We have two times five is 10. We regrouped the one and put the zero down. Now when we multiply to the tens place, we can add that regrouped 10. If we begin with the tens and do two times 10, we would have 20. Then we did the ones and need to regroup. We've already multiplied the tens and can't add the regrouped number to it to put it into this row for our pro partial product. So we have to start with the ones when using regrouping. We can use mental math to identify relationships and find the number. We have 20 times 18 is equal to 360. So 20 times 19 is equal to what amount? So we think, well, 20 times 18 can be 20 in 18 groups. And 20 times 19 could be 20 in 19 groups. So we have one more group of 20 here. We'll just add 20 to the 360. That will be 380. We just needed to add another group of 20. Sarah bought 14 yards of fabric at $24 per yard to make drapes for her house. If she pays the clerk with four $100 bills, how much change will Sarah receive? So, First, we need to multiply 14 times the $24 to find the cost of all the fabric. Then we need to subtract to find the difference of $400 and that cost. There's four $100 bills. $100 times four is $400. So we can use the regrouping method for this one. We're gonna do 24 times 14. We start with the ones place and do four times four, which is 16. We regroup the one and put the six down. Now we do four times two tens, which is eight tens, plus one more 10 is nine tens. So we put a nine in the tens place. Now we're gonna do 10 times four, which is 40. So we put a four and a zero here, because that's always a zero, isn't it? We can look at it as that's gonna, we know that's gonna be a zero, so we just do one times four is four. Now we do one times two, which is two, and we should have crossed out that one when we were doing the four times four is 16, shouldn't we? So we wouldn't get it confused when we're multiplying the tens. So we do 10 times 20, which is 200. We write the 200 in the hundreds place. We add our partial products. We get six plus zero is six, nine plus four is 13. We regroup the one and put the three down. We have two, three, we put that down here. So we see she spent $336 for the fabric for her drapes, but she paid with four $100 bills, that is $400. We need to subtract the $336 to know how much change she received. We have a zero and need to subtract six, but we can't, there's not enough there. We, have, we can't regroup from this zero because it doesn't have anything either. So we would have to look at going into the hundreds place but what we can do is we can group the four and the zero as 40 tens and cross it off together and make it 39 tens. Then we can give one of those tens to the ones place and make it 10 ones. Now what we can do is have 10 minus six, which is a four, nine minus three, which is six, we have three minus three, so we don't need to write anything there, and we see she gets $64 change. 
So if you're confused about what I did here is I grouped the 4 and 0 together for the 400 as 40 tens. And I crossed them off together and made it 39 tens and 10 ones. Then we could take away 33 tens and 6 ones. We ended up with 6 tens and 4 ones. And we learned how to do this back in the beginning of third grade math. It's in lesson 1.11. So if that confuses you, I'll have a link to that too, so you can review it. Each of 31 dancers in group A practiced for 36 minutes. Each of 32 dancers in group B practiced for 35 minutes. So which group practiced for more minutes? So we need to multiply 31 times the 36 minutes then 32 times the 35 minutes, then we need to compare the products to see which is more. I'm going to use regrouping method this time. We could use partial products, but I want to go back and forth so you keep reviewing each way to do it. So with regrouping, we start with the ones. We have 6 times 1 is 6. We have 6 times 3 tens, which is 18 tens. So we write that here. And we know there's always a 0 in this place. So we're going to do 3 tens times 1, which is 3 tens. We're going to do 3 times 3, which is 9. We add our partial products and get 1,116. Now we're going to multiply 32 times 35. We do 5 times 2, which is 10, which is regrouping the 1 up here and putting the 0 down here. Then doing 5 times 3 tens, which is 15, plus another 10 is 16 tens, and we write it here. And we remember to cross off that regrouped number so we don't mistakenly use it when we go to multiply the tens. Now we multiply 3 tens times 2, which is 6 tens, or 60. That's why we've got a 6 zero here, or a 6 in the tens place. Then we do 3 times 3, which is 30 times 30, which is 900. And that's going to go in the hundreds place. We add our partial products and get 1,120. We need to know which one is more. We know 1,116 is less than 1,120. So group B practiced more. They practiced for more minutes. There are 45 bags of apples. 22 of the bags contain 12 apples each. The rest of the bags contain 24 apples each. How many apples are in the bags? So it's not telling us the number of the rest of the bags, but we do know that there were 45 bags and 22 of them had 12 apples. So we can do 45 minus the 22 bags and see that the rest of the bags would be 23 bags. We have 22 bags of 12 and 23 bags of 24. We multiply 22 times 12, then we multiply 23 times 24, and then we'll add the products to know how many apples are in the bags, how many there are all together. We're going to choose to use the partial products method this time so we can review it together. So the first thing we do is estimate what our product should be to know a reasonable answer. We have a 22 that rounds to 20. We have a 12 that rounds to 10. We have 200 for our estimate. Using partial products, we start with the tens place and do 10 times 20, which is 200. Now we do 10 times 2, which is 20. Then we do 2 times 20, which is 40. Then we do 2 times 2, which is 4. Our product is 264. Now we need to multiply 23 times 24. We start with the tens place with 20 times 20, which is 400, and that's our estimate. We do 20 times 3, which is 60. We do 4 times 20, which is 80. We do 4 times 3, which is 12, and our product is 552. We need to know how many apples altogether. So this was the 22 bags of 12 and the 23 bags of 24. We need to add these two products together to get the total amount of apples. We add them together, we get 816 apples. 
So you can decide which method you prefer using partial products so you can see all the steps or regrouping because you might think it's faster, but you do need to learn both methods. In our next lesson, 3.7, we're going to solve word problems using two-digit multiplication using the strategy Draw a Diagram. Have a great day, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.